Choosing a gel nail brush for application, believe it or not, is not a hard task. It simply is a matter of, well, do you want a round brush or a flat one? And from there, you would choose a brand. Choosing that brand is easy because ideally, you will go with the one that makes the gel you want to assign a brush to. But sometimes, I understand, that brush may not be comfortable. And here's the thing, whether round or square, you do want to choose the option that feels most comfortable to you. In today's video, we'll be identifying some pointers on why you may choose one shape over the other. Let's begin. Hey there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Paola of paolaponsenails.com and I help you master all of your general services using Japanese soft gel only. If this sounds like a niche you'd like to consider exploring and at the end of this video, do consider subscribing. Square brush. This is the preferred application brush for base gel in Japan. And often a square brush is also labeled as a flat. So they're the same thing. It just refers to the edge of the brush being straight. Here are three benefits to a square brush. First, a square brush is a bit more thin than a round brush. And by that, I mean that it's a little bit more flat and it doesn't have that many bristles. That's the reason why it's a little bit more flat or thin. Thin. The less product it is going to absorb though, if it doesn't have a lot of bristles. So think about when that would be beneficial. That's actually a good thing. Pretty much for any occasion while applying your soft padded gel. But you especially would not want a thin brush for your builder gel application because you want something with more bristles to firm up the brush as you're essentially going to use that brush as a scooping tool. Secondly, the corners on a square brush allow you to round out the cuticle area. I know you're like, what? Most cuticle areas are round. Wouldn't a round brush work better for this? I know, I thought the exact same thing. But one thing I was not considering is that in Japanese gel nail technique, you use the corner of your square brush sort of as a liner to frame out your gel around the cuticle area. And because you have already learned that a square brush is thinner, it outlines your gel thinly, which is perfect for slip layers. Thirdly, the corners of a square brush can help you adjust the apex. Adjusting the apex of the nail is another really cool opportunity to use the corners of a square brush. You again get to use the square brush's corners as a liner. And this liner is not only good for guiding the cuticle application and adjusting the apex, right? But also for cleaning up the sidewalls of the nail. This is a huge time saver if you are an advanced nail tech who actually uses a separate liner to adjust your sidewalls or apex with the liner brush. I was taught this way, but I just found that even though this was an effective technique, anytime you pick up a tool and drop a tool, it slows you down. You're resetting your focus. So you're trading perfection for time and time in business is money. Here are some brushes I have experience with and that have become favorites. Coco is medium flat almost twice as big as the original flat. If you are consistently working on long nails and you wanna stay using soft potted gels right on, but you may need a larger brush and Cocoa is medium flat is your answer. It also works for smaller nails, but if you're a little bit more dainty or more light handed, then you may benefit from just the regular flat and not the medium flat. Lily Gel Flat, my latest favorite. This is because it's only been released for about a year. So once I've tried it, I was like, okay, this is pretty good. I've used a lot of brushes and this one is special. It's comparable to Coco is flat, but a little narrower and thicker. So it's great for medium to long nails and very comfortable to use with all of your gels, clear or colored. Let's now talk about a round brush. In the salon, I personally could not work with anything other than round for like, Ever. <laughs> but I have slowly but surely coached myself to use a flat brush now, at least for a base gel application because it's the more traditional way to apply in Japan. It took a little slowing down for me from salon work, now as a full-time educator, to really appreciate those corners on a square brush. They really are helpful. So give it a try if you haven't already. And just keep in mind that round and oval are used interchangeably to describe the curved edge of this brush type. Here are two benefits to a round brush. A round brush can help you move in a hurry as it will always apply rounded edges. If you press down your brush, it will apply it round, right? The color, the product. Whereas if you press down with a square brush, you can just try this on your palette. If you press the brush, the flat brush down, you're gonna apply it in like more of a square flat manner. And then you're gonna have to guide the corners of the brush to give you a rounded cuticle area. 
So a round brush can be typically firmer, making it at least for me more useful for builder gel application. And perhaps you're like, well, what about those useful corners from a square brush to even out your apex and side walls? Have no fear. As long as you remove the excess on your round brush, right on the pot, and you would do that with the square brush too, you would use the highest point of your round brush as a liner. Isn't that pretty cool? Here are some brushes I have experience with and have become Vetro Oval Brush. Now, I've liked this brush since I started with Japanese Gel Nail Systems back in 2016. All-time favorite for me, I recommend it, and I especially like it for color application. Super bouncy, which means it has flexibility and does not remove color with every stroke. It's not too small or not too big, just the right size for anyone to get used to. Coco is Brown Brush. This is an all-time favorite for me, especially for clear gels. Not bad for colors, but I do find it has more bristles, so it's gonna pick up more product. And so that may be an issue when you go to pick up your color, right? You may want, you may pick up more color than you want to. But nice and flexible, and like I say, bouncy. Coco is thin round, slowly creeping to be a fave, but this one I like particularly more for builder because it's a little bit thinner, right? A little bit more thinner. And you might be saying, whoa, if it's thinner, it has this bristle, so does that mean that you cannot use it as a scooping tool. Well, if you look at it, it's shorter and that shortness gives it some firmness for you to use it as a scooping tool. Well, as a scooping brush for your builder job. Lily Gel Oval Plus. This oval brush is the perfect oval size for any of your applications, foundation gels and colors. This is also creeping to be a favorite. Again, Lily Gel brushes were just released like I want to say like a year or two ago. So that's why I say they're creeping to be favorites because for all these years I've had these other favorites, right? Like that Vetro Oval and that Coco is flat. But now it's like competition, okay? Like Lily Gel brushes I really enjoy using. So this one is medium. It's kind of thin. It's not super thin and it's firm and it's got enough bounce. So it will apply any of your gels very, very good. Like however you want them to apply. Like if you want to apply them thin, if you want to apply them sculpted, if you want to apply them thicker, like Lily Gel Brush is really universal use, okay? So just FYI, I definitely have to throw it out there as a recommendation. And as you can see, it's all up to you as far as square or round for the longest time I was used to a round and slowly but surely I switched into a square. So you do the same thing, you try a few, and it's okay to try a few while you're still growing in this niche, and then find the one, using our guidance today, right? Find the one that works for you and the use that you assign it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. Thank you for watching. If you loved today's video, can you do me a favor and give it a thumbs up to boost it up in the algorithm so that I may help more people. And if you need a little more direction in your nail career, I wanna encourage you to join my free masterclass using the link in the description box below. It is available for you to watch immediately for free right now after signing up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. We're continuing on with our one video per day challenge this month. That's right, one video each day for a total of 31 consecutive videos. If you're all in on soft potted gel nail systems or being a specialized gel nail stylist in these systems, I got your back these next 30 days and of course in this channel all together because those are revolving topics here. Please, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, hit the notification bell icon so that you're notified as soon as our video drops. Otherwise, every video goes up at 6 p.m. Eastern.